Okay, so there isn't some big secret. There isn't a, a 10 video guide that's gonna make you the best player at Battlefield 1. Honestly, play your class, play the objective, support your teammates, and give yourself some time. Give yourself time with the game, and you're gonna be better than most Battlefield players, let me tell you. A lot of them aren't even doing that. What I'm gonna be doing over the next few minutes is telling you basically everything that you need to know about Battlefield 1. This is really gonna be all you need, veteran or, or new player alike. There are so many features, so many mechanics in this game that are easily overlooked. There's something here for everyone. I'm gonna start with something that affected me very personally. Don't try to stab somebody that's using anti-air, field gun, or mortar. It doesn't work! Shoot him! Yeah! Sure! Shoot him! But don't stab him! Trust me, I learned that the hard way. You don't want to learn that the hard way. Bayonets don't affect aim down sight speed, but they will increase the time before you can fire from sprinting, and they also increase the time it takes your weapon to recover from recoil after firing. With a gun of a fire rate of 550, it seems you can get almost two shots off with a bayonetless gun before you can get a shot off with the same gun bayoneted. You have three preset nameable loadouts for each class, which is perfect for storing alternate class builds and switching on the fly. If aiming sometimes feels weird in Battlefield 1, or if you suck and you can't figure out why, or even if you don't have any of those problems, try turning uniform soldier aiming on. It keeps sensitivity consistent when aiming down the sights for all types of weapons and scopes. The sensitivity change between weapons requires you to readjust your muscle memory between changes. You may not notice it, but your brain does. The less you think about the controls, the more you can focus on adapting to the ever-changing battlefield. I like to toggle uniform soldier aiming on in addition to field of view scaling. Field of view scaling allows you to, instead of adapting to a suddenly zoomed in view, you have a point in the middle of the screen to place your shots. You also have a bigger field of view so you can see more of the enemy, more of the battlefield, and that is a very good thing. Some doors can be locked from one side and cannot be opened from the other. This is huge for defending certain positions. I like to force the enemy's hand, make him fight on my terms. I recommend that you always track a medal. Even if you don't think you're gonna complete it, you could still complete it by accident, or at least partially complete it. Ideally, you'll treat them as objectives and go after them one by one, but keep in mind that there is an order to completing the tasks within a medal. At the end, you'll get a bunch of XP and a pretty sweet dog tag. No matter how heavy your class loadout is, you can sprint indefinitely, climb over obstacles, and even vault. You cannot, however, sprint from a crouched position all of the time. It's kind of like a 50-50 type of thing right now. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, maybe a bug, I don't know. But you can sprint immediately from prone. So if you're under fire and you need to leave cover quickly, it's a good idea to go prone first. While you're sprinting, you can also go prone or crouch, and you'll slide for a little bit, which is great for sliding into cover. But that's not to say that you should go Rambo. Far from it, Battlefield is a slower FPS than most. Take your time, don't worry about kills or deaths. The only thing that matters is the objective and doing whatever it takes to get you and your team to it. The only mode where KD matters more than that is, well, Team Deathmatch, which is a banging mode. Try it, I love it. You purchase new weapons and gear with war bonds that you earn from leveling up. You unlock new weapons and gear to purchase by leveling your class, and you level your class by playing your class to its specific purposes towards objectives. Until they patch the game allowing us to edit our infantry and vehicle loadouts from the main menu, the best way to do it is just to join an empty server, and that'll also allow you to practice vehicle controls or weapons. Basically, treat this as your firing range from Battlefield 4. Vehicle configurations are huge for certain types of maps and against certain types of enemies, so please experiment as much as you can with arty, tank, and aircraft configurations. And by the way, if you're using vehicles as taxis, for instance, taking a plane to your favorite sniper's roost and then abandoning it, then not only are you a dick, but you're also killing your team. Vehicles are so vital to every game mode that they're in. In addition to this, prioritize enemy held field guns and AA guns whenever you can because they're taking out your team's vehicles. Also, spot enemy vehicles whenever you see them, both ground and air. Your team needs to know where they are. Actually spot literally everything on the map and assume that only you know where they are. Don't just focus on enemy vehicles though, because friendly vehicles are your friends. You can use them as mobile cover, and if you're playing support, if you got a wrench, use the wrench, or lose it, and replace it with something you're actually gonna use. Stats and numbers are all well and good, but messing with the enemy team's heads? That is great. 
Giving suppressive fire for your teammates on an enemy position not only makes them doubt their position and their handle on the situation, but when someone is affected in-game by suppressive fire, it alters their health regeneration and prevents squad members from spawning on them. And it also affects their accuracy and it blurs their screen. So all in all, it's a pretty great thing to do. Support specializes in this, but anyone can do it. If you're playing in a party, please, please unlock your squad. Be a team player. And if you're a squad leader, lead your squad. Start by spotting objectives and behemoths to attack or defend. Also be aware of what the rest of the team is doing. If they're pushing an objective, if they're about to capture an objective, go after it yourself. Easy, fast points. If you look at the objective and spot it. Finally, and this should go without saying, play in squads. If possible, find people to play with that have mics. Battlefield is a team game. Wars are won through combined efforts. Having a diverse team that plays the role is key. Sometimes you'll have to go out of your comfort zone and play whatever class is needed most. Assault is great for capturing flags with fast, ambushy weapons and bringing down vehicles. Meta keeps the team alive or, or brings them back. Rifle grenades can make them mini arty, that's fun. Support keeps the enemy suppressed while keeping allied ammo stocked and scout is useless as usual. <laughs> I'm joking. Scout snipes and, well, scouts. Now, obviously, there can be some class purpose overlap. Since you cannot respawn until the deployment timer is completely filled up, if you skip before it fills, you'll be able to edit loadouts, but still have to wait the remaining time before respawning, so please, please monitor the distance of nearby medics and consider not skipping this revive screen until the timer is filled up. I've had so many experiences of finally reaching the downed soldier just as they skipped before I could revive them back into action. I hate them. And you, 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 you medics that just play the class for its guns, if it's clear to do so, revive your teammates. Don't stand over their body with your thumb up your butt until they skip the timer. That's abusing trust. Also, constantly throw med packs. It's an easy class. Why do you insist on earning less points? You now have to aim directly at the enemy to spot them with a spot button. Once spotted, you'll temporarily see their class or vehicle type and health, while also marking them for your allies. If you're scout class, use your flare or periscope for this purpose as well. If support or medic aren't doing their job, calmly curse them under your breath and hold the spot button and spam request healing or request ammo while passively aggressively shooting in their general direction. Aside from hardcore mode, Battlefield 1 has no friendly fire. The only way to kill your teammates is through incidental damage like a building collapsing while they're inside, so be wary of this while you're bringing down buildings. The trench bomber configuration is something I hold near and dear to my heart because it gives fighters something to do in between downing hostile planes, which is bombing the hell out of enemy objectives. If aircraft are giving you trouble, you can deal worthwhile damage even without anti-air. Use mounted guns or even what you have on hand to do your part. Control points allow you to see how many hostiles and friendlies are on a given point. You need more friendlies than hostiles if you want to capture it. Behemoths are awarded to the losing side in Conquest. They're manned by multiple players controlled by one. They have weak points such as the gondolas underneath the airship, for example, which house players controlling powerful guns. You can either snipe the soldier controlling the gun out or destroy the gondola altogether, which will significantly cripple the airship's abilities while also bringing down its health. If you're on fire, sprinting will increase the damage. Go prone to put it out faster. Randomly, special elite kits spawn on the map. These could be armored flamethrowers, LMGs, or SMGs. You got a lot of health with extremely slow regen, so stick to your medics and support for health and ammo. You'll be unstoppable. On the flip side, help out your elite class teammates. If you're medic, heal them. If you're support, give them ammo. Even the flamethrowers' incendiary grenades can be replenished, so yes, give all of them ammo. If you run out of ammo with no support around, you can swap your kit with the dead soldiers. Similarly, if your squad medic goes down without other medics around, you can swap your kit for his, bring him back to life, and you'll step in as a temporary, much-needed healer. Okay, pencils down, we're switching primary focus to weapons facts. Partially firing certain weapons can increase reload times. The Mandragon, for instance, carries 10 rounds in two clips of five. Fire less than 5 or 10, and you'll be reloading some bullets one at a time, which is very slow, so learn your guns and empty them accordingly. Switching to your sidearm is faster than reloading. Bullets have travel time. Like real-life bullets, they don't instantly hit their mark. Some firearms have lower velocities than others, like sidearms to rifles. You'll need to account for this by aiming where your target is going to be, not where they used to be. In addition to this, bullets also have drop. 
High velocity firing weapons usually drop less. You'll account for this by aiming above your target. How high above and how far in front you'll need to aim depend on movement speed, weapon, and range. I wouldn't sweat over it, or the minutia of little numbers and details. I could go over all the guns and stats in this video, or I could make gun stat videos, but honestly, all those stats are already in-game. All you really need are the in-game stats and a little bit of practice, and you're good to go. Your accuracy depends on movement, stance, bipod, suppression, and how long you've maintained fire. Burst fire is effective for most weapons with the exception of mainly support LMGs. The longer you fire an LMG, the more accurate they get. However, the longer you fire, the closer the LMG gets to overheating. Grenades are self-explanatory. What you're effective and comfortable with matters. Forget stats. I like to use the incendiary grenade though, kind of like a gas grenade. Area denial with AOE damage, but also, kind of like the Martyr perk from World of War. If I'm about to die, toss it and take the enemy down with me. Also, try and use your grenades sometime before you die because missed grenades and unused grenades are both a waste. Now, smoke grenades truly obscure your vision. It's a great tool for medics to move in with cover because you can still see any downed soldiers via icons, but snipers can't really see you. You can also toss smoke grenades at the enemy to freak out their positions when pushing or retreating, and gas can kind of be used in the same vein as smoke. It isn't as thick, but it adds an area denial aspect while also forcing soldiers to hip fire. But keep in mind, both sides are forced to hip fire. But next time you're pushing objectives, try smoke. Assault AT rifle is not only great for taking out vehicles, but also building cover. Let's talk about vehicles. Unlike in previous Battlefield games, once a vehicle has sustained an amount of damage that disables some of its functions, it must be repaired before restoring normal operation. Different parts of vehicles take different amounts of damage. Tank armor is strongest at the front compared to the sides and the rear, for example. So literally, plan your angle of attack. Another factor of damage is impact angle. Flat angle is ideal. The higher the angle, the lower the damage. If the angle is too high, the round will ricochet and deal no damage. No vehicles regenerate health, air or ground. They must be repaired by supports wrench or self-repair, during which time nothing else can be done with a vehicle unless you are inside of an airplane. While doing self-repair in an airplane, you can either slow it down or speed it up. No turning though. If you see an infinity symbol, you can fire the vehicle's weapon until it overheats. Otherwise, you're gonna have rounds that need replenishing, like my favorite light tank and its four round capacity. Keep yourself ready by reloading more rounds whenever it's safe, because it does take time, quite a bit of time. This is actually very important and also very easy to forget in the heat of battle. When pursuing certain planes, you can try focusing on the protective gunners. Since it's their job to destroy you, it's a good idea to take them out first. Now let's reverse the situation. Let's say somebody's coming after you and you're in a bomber with no rear gunner. Just switch seats, hop in the back seat, take them out and get back in the pilot seat before you crash. I've actually done this a few times and it works really well. If you're decent with a stationary gun, it's gonna be difficult for a fighter to take the bomber down. Now let's talk about some of the best weapons for each class. Now this is extremely subjective. To be completely honest, the best thing to do is just to try all the guns yourself, see which ones you like, Ignore the stats, see which ones you like, see which ones you're comfortable with, because that is what's most important. It's not so much the sword, but instead the knight who wields it. With that understood, we're gonna be going over the general consensus of the best weapon for each class. Most people agree that the Mundragon is one of the best weapons for the medic. I prefer the Storm variant myself. Its 10 shot capacity is more than enough to handle three hostiles at once. The self ladder is another great choice with a three shots kill average, and the M1907 is an alternative if you prefer more automatic style. Most assault enjoy the MP18. If you don't, try the optical or the other variants. You should find something that suits you within its family, but the Hellrigel 1915 is the tops. It's worth the grind to rank 10. It's almost unanimously the best weapon for assault. The Model 10A and Trench Shotgun are brutal if you play them proper. I recommend giving shotguns a shot, no pun intended. As for support, the Bar 1918 is both accurate and deadly, not the best at suppression, however, with only 20 rounds. The M1909 can hold you over until you unlock that. It has higher initial accuracy and lower drop, and also hits harder than the Lewis. Though the suppressive variant of the MG15 is great if you just want to really get in there and play the class. I don't play Scout myself, but the consensus is Lawrence's gun is fun, Russian 1895 has great reload speed, and the Gewehr M95 Marksman allows reloading without leaving scope. 
Melee damage, radius, and attack speed depend on your weapon. Hits from behind will always result in assassinations that you'll steal dog tags from, but you can be killed during the animation. Certain melee weapons can also destroy barbed wire and vehicles. Also, assassinations seem to be silent, because you can just go up behind them like... and they won't even notice. I'm gonna wrap this up with the ever-helpful, ever-necessary support and medic quick tips. Spot your nearby health and ammo-depleted allies to dispense med bags, ammo bags automatically. Doesn't work for boxes, but do this. Do this constantly, even if you don't think they need health or ammo, just do it. At some point, they may need it and they can pick it up again. You are gonna get points coming out of your ears if you're constantly like 24 7 giving out health and ammo like it's muscle reflex the ammo and medic boxes are great they're great for defending stationary positions when you're entrenched defensive if you're using the bags that's great for mobile squads on the move it sticks to team members until they're fully healed or until they're shot which interrupts the process just keep hand of those bags and crates out like candy on halloween Suppression, to go into further detail, is a mainstay of support. Suppression causes the affected screen to blur, lowers accuracy, and increases recoil. Various weapons cause varying degrees of suppression, and one of the reasons suppression is so key is due to the fact that suppression affects auto-healing and prevents squad mates from spawning on the affected. And that's the whole kit and caboodle. That's just about everything you could want or need to know about Battlefield 1. Really, the rest is just up to you. You got it in you. You got the touch. And if you want stats, if you want numbers, all that stuff is already in the game. Push the objective, play your class, adapt to the battlefield, get a good squad going. Don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone and give yourself some time with the game. I hope this helped you out. I also hope you found it entertaining. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, join our YouTube fam. We do all kinds of streams together. And as soon as I can rent servers in Battlefield 1, we're going to be doing subscriber war game events where it's just me and you kill each other. It's going to be badass. But until next time, good luck out there. Maybe I'll see you on the battlefield.